Last week on our off-grid homestead, we had our first real issue with our solar power system. Something was causing our well to short out the solar power system, so we had no water and no power. After a few nights of troubleshooting, we diagnosed the problem and were faced with two choices. Dig up 200 feet of trench and try to find where the short was, or lay a whole new line. We hand dug the original trenches, but because we want to get back to the house build and we need water, we decided to rent a trencher and just lay a whole new line. goal for today is get this uh, trench dug. The well is about 180 feet from the surface panel. There's a very narrow path to dig a trench between the house site and a few pine trees. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to get that trench as straight as possible without hitting too many major root systems. I'm going to keep the line as close to the house site as possible, try to avoid any big roots in the ground there. But first, it's time to clean up. We've been using the generator to power the well, so we have water for ourselves and the animals. While this is kind of a setback for the house build, I don't think I'll ever take running water for granted again. Now it's time to move all the debris out of the way so we have a nice straight shot for the trench. Any excuse to get behind the wheel of the tractor though, right? All right, what did you get over here? Oh. Wow, that's a lot of eggs. Good haul. Now it's time to fire up the trencher. This was probably one of the best days of the boys' lives. Our original trench was 24 inches deep, but since we're running the wire and conduit this time, it really only needs to be below 18. Alright, it is sickening how fast that goes. When we hand dug the original trench, it took me about 4 hours to dig 50 feet. I'm feeling a bit like Mike Mulligan right now. It's a beautiful day out and the trench digging is going so smoothly. What could possibly go wrong? You'll see soon enough. to get the trencher stuck so we're breaking out the tractor to pull it out i mean what would a project be without one piece of equipment getting stuck it's gotta happen in the past year a dump truck full of gravel has gotten stuck a bulldozer has gotten stuck both our vehicles have gotten stuck and a concrete truck has gotten stuck Let's just add the trenching machine to that list now. It's just another day on the Wildberry Woods homestead. Thankfully, this was a pretty easy fix. It did make a pretty big mess and we're going to have to retrench this whole section now.
even though we uncovered this spot very carefully with a shovel, um, it looks like the pipe got cracked. So now we'll have to fix this pipe. I'm going to be using this Odie medium gray PVC cement specifically designed for electrical conduit. Oh, we're back to gluing pipes in the dirt. My favorite thing to do. The electrical line needs to go under the septic line, so we're going to route the wire underneath the line. Pull it back all the way to the end, and then run it through conduit. You're going to be on this side, and you're going to take that wire. Okay. And as you pull it this way, I'm going to pull it this way. So you're wow. basically feeding it underneath yeah, the see. pipe. I get what we're doing. Come on. Here I'm acting as a counterweight while Justin pulls the wire through the conduit and works it down the line. While we were working, the little one stuffed the spigot with screws. So uh, now we're gonna get them out. There you go. Let's not do that again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna be back in that spigot in two minutes. I guess I'll just leave the tool up here. <laughs> It'll keep him busy. <laughs> I had a feeling he was going to go back for a second try. <laughs> yeah, he's not again. We just gotta make sure not to leave them in there because if we open the spigot with those in there, it might go down. I have lots of experience gluing electrical conduit pipes from when we installed our solar panel wiring. So this part of the job was going very smoothly. Oh yeah, well all the screws are still in there. Look. I'm going to save this for a future project, but I'm leaving myself the option with this uh, electrical box to install an outlet in the future that I could just plug the well pump into instead of having to hotwire the generator next time. Yeah, I can hear it coming. <laughs> you can hear it coming? Can you unplug that from the generator, please? Sure. Oh, it's getting chilly. To go in and put on a jacket.
He rarely does a project without an audience. What? I don't know if this hole is going to be big enough for uh, the next size up. It's always something. Yeah, always something. <sighs> What's the fix for that? I don't know if I have one right now. The hole is just a little bit too... The hole is made for a half inch mm -hmm. and not a three quarter inch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I gotta figure out what can I even use? Uh -huh. Quarter inch to one half inch adapter piece, but I've already glued on the three quarter inch piece, so. <laughs> Can't win for trying. No. It never takes him very long to come up with a solution. He's decided to break out the grinder and see if he can just widen the hole enough. It's starting to get late in the day and everyone is tired and hungry, but we really need to get this project buttoned up so we have running water again. Running the generator at night has allowed us to run a batch of laundry, do dishes, and make sure everyone gets showered. It's a temporary solution and it's really impeding our progress on the house. Go pull this tight again for me. Well, I finally got the wire routed in, so the next thing I need to do is install the post and then we can wire up this side of the uh, pressure switch and then we'll be all done on this side of the circuit. We can head back over and finish up the circuit over at the service panel and then we'll be done. Awesome. Just hold the post steady right here. My fillet. I need to get to the wire inside. This time I was actually prepared with my multi-tool. This little mini Gerber Dime multi-tool is my favorite multi-tool that I own and I carry it with me almost all the time and use it on so many different projects. Check the description for an Amazon link to this tool. If you haven't noticed, I have my favorite tool brands, Dewalt probably being the number one but I also really like channel lock hand tools. They still make a lot of their pliers in the USA.
there's not a lot of space inside the pressure switch, so I'm just trying to organize all the wires so they'll fit properly. You'll also see me use a lot of Klein tools for electrical work. I really like their style. This multi-purpose screwdriver from Klein has so many different uses and really helped me out to make this project a lot easier. We are wiring up the other side of the circuit now, not the electrical box. Unfortunately, we have lost one of the screws, so we can't button up the system tonight. Unless I go to the hardware store. Which closes. Or unless I can find another random screw in my arsenal of random things. Which is entirely possible. That will fit. Out of all the disasters we've had, this is probably one of the most frustrating ones. Frustrating and time consuming. <laughs> Okay, so what are we, where are we now? Well, I gotta dig the, uh, the other screw out of my pocket, but I was able to find what I think will work as a replacement screw. This one came from a spare electrical socket that I had, and I figured, hey, those screws are designed to hold wires, so maybe it'll work. And it looks pretty much identical, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. But if this works, then this is the last step. And once I get these wired in, we should be able to test it out. So far, so good. So we could possibly have running water tonight. We will have running water tonight. As long as there's nothing wrong with the circuit. <laughs> oh, great. And I just dropped that other screw. You lost the screw again. Dude, you're not allowed to have screws anymore. <laughs> oh, oh no, there it is. There it is, right there. We're good. All right, everything looks good. Check for the test. Woohoo! Well, that's good because this is ground right here. And the original problem we had with the other wire is that all of these hot wires were grounded. Now, with the new wire, everything looks good. Everything should work. Once I flip the circuit breaker, we should get power to the pump and we should have water. It was a beautiful sight to see that well pressurized. It was such a relief to finally put this behind us. Now it's time to clean up the mess. If there's one lesson we've learned from this experience, it's build to code and then some.